hello, we're going to catch some tench on the pole in the winter with corn. It's going to be good, something different. This is the venue, Pete's Pond. I fished here once before, did a video way back when. It's a lovely little pond stocked with tench and corrosions. Well, what do you reckon to it? I like the look of it. I think we're going to catch a few today. It's going to be good. So I don't do a lot of pole fishing, but I do quite enjoy it. I came down here the other day and totally blank perch fishing. So I was like, still waters. I don't do any still waters. And the river the other day was totally flooded. So I was like, oh, for goodness sake, let's uh, try and do something a bit different. So we're going to do a bit of pole fishing. I've already caught a tench. I always like to catch a fish before I start filming because you wouldn't believe how often I go to make a video and blank. <laughs> That's not that often, to be honest, but you uh, can go out and catch bugger all. Anyway, so yeah, pole fishing. I've got a 0.5 gram float. Uh, it's a wire stem float with quite a thick tip because my eyes are going. Uh, it's 15 mil 015 straight through, oh, uh, 015 to a 13 hook length, and then a size 18 B911 barbless and some uh, strung out bulk. Uh, it's about four foot deep out there. And what I'm doing, I'm just feeding corn for a cad pot, pole pot, little pole pot on the end, so you've got to be nice and smooth, and a tiny pinch of micros. It's proper little nick and tuck fishing. I quite like nick and tuck fishing, especially when you get a two pound tension after each cast. So I'm being really careful not to feed too much. I'm literally just putting, putting uh, two bits of corn in, and I'm even thinking about putting in less. I'm thinking about chopping up one bit of corn and then just putting my hook bait in. I've baited up two spots at about 11 metres, right in line with the shadow of that tree. And I'm just lowering it in and trying to be as accurate as possible. I didn't have to wait too long. So yeah, just a little bit of corn and the micro goes right around the pole float and just see what happened, see what happens. Had a bit of a strange indication. I think there's a few fish around there because I'm getting a, that float sort of settled and then went up a little bit. So I think there's a few fish. Yeah, there's definitely a few fish feeding down there already. I might, I might get away with being a little bit more aggressive. We'll just see what happens. I'll keep nip and tuck in and see how it goes. So yeah, all we're feeding is a tiny pinch of micros. I've got a little pinch, so it's a bit of a ball, but a few loose ones to attract them. And two bits of corn this time. I've got another line on the other side where I'm putting micros and some uh, cell pellets, just as an alternative. So I've got one at 11 and one at one. All right, let's ship out. This is the tricky bit. Something that does help is getting your pole roller set up right so that it goes across your knee and slide out nice and smooth. I haven't got it quite set up right because I've got a really steep bank as I go out behind me. The bit that's the trickiest bit is when it comes off the roller onto just your knee. So there we go, we're getting it all out nice and smooth, haven't dropped it in. It's silly when you drop it in. Right, I'm gonna let it fall in an arc on a tight line and when it hits the bottom, I'm just going to leave it there for a bit so it's just falling nicely. I'll give a fish a chance to see that. Once it settles, I'm going to have a lift and a... If I don't get a bite, I'm going to have a lift and then drop the bait in and just count and lower it in, hopefully with the bait. I'm going to get a bite straight away. I'm going to put my bait in. There's a few fish down there. I think they might be little ones, so I think I might end up having to stop feeding the micros. Just feed corn. Definitely a few fish down there. That 
folks moving straight away. I've got quite a long lash because it's not very deep. Yeah, missed that as well. It's not very deep and I didn't want to scare him off. The visibility is quite clear, but I might end up having a shorter lash in a minute. By lash, I mean the length of line between the pole and the float. There is a bit of wind and I've got a two number eight back shot halfway between the float and the pole tip, just to try and keep a bit of control. It's not windy that much, but every now and then there's a bit of a blow. There's a fish. I'm pulling quite hard, quite quickly. There's a lot of lily pads over the other side there. Whoa! It's a good bit of sport, isn't it? Not massive tench. There we go. Ooh. Making a big zero of that. Oh, he's in the net. Nice. Have a look at him. Oh yeah, we got one pretty quickly actually. There was, I was quite surprised how many fish or how many bites. I sort of waited 10 minutes when I first got here for a bite. And then uh, it obviously just took a while to come onto the feed. I potted in some feed straight away. And um, yeah, had some missed bites. But yeah, lovely little tench. Ooh, ooh. Oh, I'm so good at fish juggling. It's only about a pound, but it's a beautiful fish. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I must do a compilation of all my fish juggling, because I do a lot of it. I noticed in a video I was making yesterday, there was a roach off my elbow and one off the other side, and boop, boop, boop. <laughs> roll up, roll up. Queuing up. <laughs> oh, I think I've got the line wrapped around the. It might have come off because the elastic's not coming out. <laughs> Which could be a problem. Why is that not coming out? Ugh. Jubbly jubbly. Good. I was lucky to land that. I'm glad it wasn't any bigger. So that's three tench. I've been here half hour. <laughs> right in the top lip as well. I've just got to check. I think I laid that into the wind and it's just got wrapped around the pole pot, which does happen from time to time. Yeah, there it is. That's free now. I might move the pole pot back a bit and make the lash a bit shorter. I'm fishing at 12 o'clock, no, 1 o'clock, and the wind's blowing right to left, which is making it a bit tricky. Get this little one back. Just baited up that other swim. Something that can be, uh, uh, you can be guilty of is just concentrating on fishing that line and when that line goes dead you haven't fed that line enough and then all of a sudden you're uh, you ain't got nothing to catch there are loads of fish out here today <laughs> this is a bit better one this one I'm definitely going to reduce the length of the lash in a minute. Staying a bit deep. Uh, no, yeah, he's a bit better. Oh yeah. I might go a couple of pounds on that one. Let's put that down there. Yeah, probably a pound and a half. 
and the quarter. Lovely bite, really nice bite. Oh, it's cooked a bit unusually. Yeah, male tench. Oh, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. You can tell it's a male by the curved fins. But yeah, nice little tench on a cold winter's day. Well, it's not that cold, it's about 11, 12 degrees. Magic. So yeah, just try and keep the pole going nice and smooth across your knees. It would be nice if the pole roller was a little bit higher up. But the bank slopes way behind me. So I'm just going to feed that other swim. And I'll just get it so that the join of the pole is on the tip of my thumb. Tap, tap, tap. I'll tell you what, there's nothing better than potting in feed and lifting your float up. It's so precise. So precise. But I've got to shorten that lash. That's what needs to be done. Let's do that now. Right, let's do the lash. This is a really good little tip. Um, when you're tying a pole rig, just put another loop in it, and then you just pull that, hang on. <laughs> I say you just pull that. You need to have a slack line. Get a slack line. Let's take that off a minute. So yeah, just pull this little loop. Tug, 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 a few times. And there she comes. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take maybe a foot off it, put another loop in it. Now just give me a bit more bite detection and just stop it whapping about so much. Right, whilst I've been doing that, I have moved the pole pot a bit further back from the tip, just so that uh, there's less chance of um, it catching round the line catching round it which was what happened on that last fish and subsequently oh I didn't lose it but I was lucky not to lose it if it was a bigger fish could have snapped me right out she goes about to pop off the thing over the knee right I don't know whether I'm right laying it in flat or whether I should just drop it in horizontally vertically. I was thinking I needed to attract some fish by laying it in on the drop as such so they see it falling down but I don't think it's a problem I think there's quite a few fish here I think I'm going to lower it in vertically next time put a pot straight over the top of it right let's try a vertical drop when you're doing this, you've got to keep it all straight and just lower it in nice and slow. And if you can get it going down with the bait, which you can when you're really good at it, you just as it settles, it just keeps going. <laughs> it's magic. It is magic. But that wasn't very good. I haven't done it in ages. Let's give it a little lift and a, lift and a dip. Just a little up and down. Catch their eye. Oh, yep. Oh, that worked. That definitely worked. I had to bite straight away. It always amazes me all the little tricks that you can do just to attempt to bite. <laughs> Worst thing is when it's a shit day, you can't get to it. No matter how many little tricks or that you do, you don't catch nothing. Miss bite. <clears throat> One more miss bite, and I'm going to do something. I think I'm going to grease the line and just feed corn. Grease the float and just feed corn so I can read these bites a bit better. So it's, it's dotted right down, right down. <clears throat> so they only have to sneeze on it and it goes under. There's a fish. Ooh. 
a better one. Oh, steady. Uh. I've got a puller kit on here, I don't really need it, but just to keep them under control. Oh yeah, that's another nice tent. <laughs> it's a good sport. I should come in more often. Yeah. Yeah, that is the best tent of the day. Getting bigger. Sometimes when they have got big fish, that's why you uh, get lots of funny bites. Because they're just, they're big. They touch the line. And they just get little wafts and, oh yeah, nice. All right, mate. All right, all right. It's getting unhooked. Little tinker, little red eyes. <laughs> I think that's a female, that one. Beautiful. I think that one might go two pound. Yeah, very good thing to have when you're uh, pole fishing. A little bit of Vaseline. It's really good. Just dip your float in it. Just to help it stay in the surface tension because you get it shotted so well. You can, um, yeah doesn't need much to make a difference. Ah, I'll tell you what, that might make a difference. I've lost a little, one of my shots down there has slid up. Let's move that down there, move that back. Just a little marker shot might just be affecting how I'm seeing the bites. Right, let's get back out there. Right, just corn in the pot this time. Okay, five grains, let's go bold. That float's sit, sitting much nicer now. It's still still sensitive, but there's just a little bit more tip. Hopefully, just make it a little bit easier to read these bites. Oh man, that just went under beautifully and I missed it. <laughs> I'm not gonna feed this time because I put five or six bits of corn in that time. Yeah, what I was saying about the fishing in the same place every time. If I uh, have my thumb like that on that join, then when I ship out, I know that the end of my tip is that length. There's a bit of variation, but I'm feeding the variation where the float is, which is good because you want to feed. That was a fish, got in then. I think it's a little one. These little tents are well cute. <laughs> But that might be why you're missing a few. It might be a cruising, you never know. Nice little tench. Yeah, look at these. These are proper cute. <laughs> They're so cute. Tench are weird. They're like no other fish. Look at that. Oh, sorry, mate. Oh, more fish juggling. Come on, let's get you in the water. Right, we don't want loads of those. Right, we'll give the other line a bit of a try. Haven't fished it that much. But just getting little ones over there, so I'm just leaving it alone for a bit. Just see what happens on this one. Surprisingly, not a bite on that. Albeit it's only been out there a minute. But um, I'd have expected to get one. I used to when uh, I was fishing reserve lines or having a bonus fish line, 90 seconds, I'd count 90 seconds, and uh, I'd expect to catch one on that, that quickly on those sort of lines where you've been priming them. If they're there, you just go down with a bait and you fed it the right amount, you should catch them pretty quick. And there's no point wasting forever down there if they ain't there, especially if you're catching in another spot, which I was. Let's go back down there, lower it in nice. There she be. Oh, that's a good one. Let's go for the pads, that one. Let's roll back real quick. I don't think it's that big, it just went. They're not huge in here, these tents. They're good sport though. Say there was some cruisings in here. There we go. What I mean. 
another one in the bag. Lovely jubbly. Oh, double hook, top and bottom lip. Nice clean fish. Whilst we're fishing away, I'd just like to say, uh, if any of you guys are passing, check out Medway Tackle in Tunbridge. I, uh, they are supporting me in my efforts in my channel. So yeah, go and check them out. Great bait, nice people, good shop. Oh yes, I've got myself a little corrosion. Nice. <laughs> I was hoping to catch one of these. Oh, you little wiggler. Isn't he beautiful? Oh, little goat. Bars of butter. Wow, look at that. Lovely corrosion. Not very big, but still lovely fish. I just uh, had a little experiment then with, uh, I put all the bulk, all the weight, four inches from the hook, just to try and be really positive and show up those bites a bit better, or try hopefully connect with those bites. But if that was a, if they are corrosions, I'm not surprised I missed them. I think it's something to do with how they feed. They've got upturned mouths, and so they go down like that. I think they feed like that and they end up rubbing and touching the line all over the place. Consequently giving you lots of missable bites. Something else I'm going to try in a minute. I've been feeding down the same hole, but I've only been fishing down that hole. I've not been fishing anywhere else. I do like potting in food. <laughs> potting in bait. So yeah, I'm just going to fish around, albeit I'm not really struggling for bites. I'm just going to fish around the outside of my bait a bit. It does seem to be working, the more positive bulk. I've hit two out of three bites, which is fairly good. Have a little medium sized tench. Very pale looking tench this one. It's almost silvery. Probably feeling the cold. He looks like he's had a hard time a bit. Another male tench, curved fin. Looks very pasty. I'm not feeding corn every time at the moment. I'm putting it in sort of every every second or third pot. But I am putting in like five now rather than three or two. And yeah the more positive bulk so yeah I've literally just got all the bulk just above uh, I think that's a six inch hook length. It seems pretty uh, not very subtle but I'm hoping it helps me hit the bites. They're not very pressured, these fish, so they shouldn't be too rig sensitive. Most of the members fish the carp lake behind me. There's three members on there today. Let's lower it in. I've got to do this vertically with this, uh, lower it in vertically with this shotting pattern because it's going to go down like a sack of spuds. <laughs> Like that. Bosh, oh, lowered it in straight, went straight back down. Nice, I like it when it does that, but I missed it. <laughs> That's the ultimate pole fishing. Lower your bait down with your pole pot. As soon as it hits the bottom with the bait, fish has it. I think I could have a shorter lash still. It's not making, still missing lots of bites. <laughs> Might be a combination of things, not feeding, not fishing right on the feed, because it could be that that feed goes in, because I definitely got more bites when that feed went in. 
and there's a little flurry of activity around the feed which causes mist bites. So what I might do is just fish to the side of it a bit. I do like thinking about the fishing. I think that's the most fun. It's not just catching them and hooking them and playing them. It's the tempting a bite. How can I catch more? There's a fish. Ooh. Ooh, I've got a, oh, he has gone in the pads. Oh, shit. No, I think I've got him out. I was just dawdling a bit with him. Let's get back down to the puller kit. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> He's got in the bushes. <sighs> it's not a massive tent, it's none of them are, but he's a goer. Great morning sport, eh? A bit chunky that one, still very pale. <laughs> so smooth. That's so smooth. Oh, the hooked in the top lip, that's nice. Lovely little tinker. And relax. It's been nice. Now, shall I feed or shall I not? I think I am going to feed this cast. I didn't feed last cast. I've given up feeding the micros because I think they attracted the little tench. Albeit those little tench would still manage to get that corn down their cobs. There's a family of more hens over there. saying about the fish being a little flurry of bites when I feed. So like I say, I might feed and fish around it. Right, that's right on the hole. Haven't fed. Straight away, <laughs> look, that went under straight away as soon as it hit the bomb. And I ended up feeding on the side. <laughs> work. I think that different shotting pattern is definitely making the bites a bit easier to hit. Still missing a few. Okay. That might work quite well if I feed once I catch a fish. If they're all coming in, by the time I go in with my next bait, they've all settled down and I can my hook bait's the only one left. That would be a big pain, wouldn't it? One a bung. <laughs> I'll tell you, some fishing's... The fishing we have these days is ridiculous. Another male. We do get some good fishing. This is exceptional fishing. I remember fishing a place, Eastwell Manor. Yeah, the tench fishing was really good there. I fished it for a few hours before before the world and his wife woke up and uh, I'd get about 20 or 30 tench. It was mad. Catch them on the drop in there. It was only tench that was in that water. It was very odd. I think they netted it for coarse fish to make it a trout fishery. And uh, they didn't get the tench out. I think the tench must have been the time of year when they were netting it, or the topography of the bottom. They were all sleeping on the bottom, and they didn't get any tench out. So subsequently, the tench went mad in there. You get like a four pounder every chuck. It's crazy fishing. Right, lower in down the hole. There should be one waiting. I'm really getting them going now. The positive bulk definitely working. 
And I think the feeding, the feeding after I've hooked one is helping, but there's a little snag. It's a bit inaccurate when you strike it because it just goes all over the place. So uh, I've just got to try and try and um, suss out how to do that. Get that right. But yeah, oh, it's a pasty looking thing. Looks like he's gone backwards, that one. I think they might be a bit hungry, these fish. So yeah, I don't know quite how I solved that, uh, the feeding bit. I was trying to just tilt the, tilt the uh, pot just before I struck so that it plopped in the right spot. Because I want to create a little hot spot ready for when I go in next time. Or ready when I go in each time. That's the idea anyway. My hands are getting a bit wet, a bit sticky on the pole. I think I've just dropped my sweet corn in the swim as well. It's the annoying thing about a cup dropping the bait out on the way around. It's good when you've got damp micros or a bit of ground bait because you can uh, just pinch it in over the top. Yeah, it's going straight away. No, didn't get, didn't hit that one. The wind's got up a bit, it's getting a bit blustery. Getting a little bit tricky. There's a fish. I think this is going to be my last fish because oh, he's heading off for the pads. That one. <laughs> I've got black hydro on. I did set up a white. I've got a white hydro and a grey hydro. But um, I think grey would have been a bit too strong and white would have been not strong enough because there are pads there and they're not, you know, they run to about four or five pound in here, albeit they average a pound and a half. Whoa. Going down to see the tripod. Might get a bump on the camera in a minute. <laughs> Literally right down there. Fish splash. Ah. That's a nice fish, nice clean fish. Lovely. Top lip, top lip. That should be because it's only just sitting on the bottom, so they just boom and then. Whoosh. Anyway, I'm going to end it on this fish. I've got to go and uh, see Cinderella with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Me and fish juggling, eh? I don't know what it is. Plus, I've got my coat covered in fish line. It's not going to be good. <laughs> right. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching. I'll. Uh, See you next video, which might be out before Christmas. I can't remember. Anyway, if I don't see you before Christmas, have a good Christmas.